Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Belongi Art. I decided to go ahead and record early in the morning um, before teaching all day. Also, I have my coffee, so I hope you join me with your coffee later on. Thank you to subscribers that are joining me for the first time. This channel is all about giving lesson ideas, giving out templates, giving out advice um, to any other educators that are running classrooms in today's world. So do join me with your coffee and we're gonna go ahead and just dive right into it. So teaching, teaching is uh, very draining. So if um, you don't take care of yourself first, it is very difficult to take care of all these other students that you're in front of every single day. So you come first so you can take care of everybody else. Um, that's what this video is all about. So some ideas, you may know a lot of these ideas, but I thought I would just throw them out there. Um, anyone looking for ways to kind of stay healthy um, and take care of themselves, um, especially so when they go to work, they're not so stressed in their classrooms. A few ideas you may already know of, just simply exercising. Um, I know for me, I like to go for a three mile run. Um, I can't do it every day because um, of school, but I do try to do it on the weekends. Another uh, way to take care of your body is eating healthy. Uh, stick to a lot of vegetables, uh, uh, protein, and just eating healthy and not so much of the fast food. I know on the weekend, though, it's nice to splurge a little bit um, and get uh, takeout every now and then. But for the most part, eating healthy will keep you strong and healthy. So another thing that will lessen the stress as a teacher is planning ahead. So if you're doing a lesson, if you can think of lessons you're gonna do kind of three weeks later, um, that will help uh, you be more organized in the classroom as well. If you can do a couple lesson plans in advance, or even just in your head already know what you're gonna, what direction you're going with your students uh, about two or three weeks in advance, um, that will help as well. I know that I do that in the art room. I know as of like today, they're working on everything fall related, but my mind is already planning for three weeks later as a teacher, just so I can start that lesson on time. Another great way to just relax um, and mentally de-stress is, I think one of the best ones is spending time with your family. Um, so I love to spend time with my kids um, and, you know, just spending the day with them. Um, but any of my family members, um, I love them all. Um, and anytime they come into town, um, I look forward to that kind of stuff. So definitely number one is uh, spending time with family. Um, sometimes, too, it's nice to talk about um, various things you're going through sometimes, even with teaching in today's world, there's, there's a lot of, um, parts to it. Um, and it can be stressful, especially if it's your first year teaching. So it's nice to have somebody to talk to about, um, all the different kind of things that are happening, um, within the school system sometimes. Um, no matter what district you work for or what school you're at, it's just nice to vent a little bit. Um, with whoever you're comfortable with kind of at home without um, dropping names and stuff though um, when you're telling stories about school. But it's definitely good to uh, kind of talk about it and work through whatever's going on a little bit too. Uh, just have somebody to talk to. Um, the other thing is just um, another way of relaxing is being creative. Um, so for me, of course, it's my go-to thing is art. 
I love to draw. Um, the students see me draw all the time. That's a way of kind of de-stressing for myself. Some people like to read, so just picking up a book. I know I come from a family of readers, um, so they love books, and um, I think that's how they kind of de-stress. They love to pick up a good book and just read. Um, I have two parents that they were all about reading, um, and so uh, books were very important in our household. Another way is creative writing. Um, just kind of writing poetry and I had another family member she's very much um, close to me and she loves to write poetry uh, and do creative writing so that is another way to kind of relax in the classroom and um, not get overly stressed by your job I hope these um, few of these tips kind of helped and definitely leave a comment below if you want to uh, communicate with me. All right, I'm going to move right on to the next video. I kind of wanted you guys to, I wanted to bring you into my classroom a little bit based on a lesson that I gave out. So let's move on to the next slide. So I am just introducing the puzzle project. Um, this is a wonderful project that can be integrated into any uh, classroom, whether you teach math or science or any of the subjects, English, it, it would work for any of them. It um, allows the students to express themselves, um, be creative and encourages them also to work as a team and as a class, uh, work together. They also learn to appreciate um, other students work in the classroom as well because they're observing all those puzzles coming together to create a class heart which I like to call it. If you enjoy by the end of this video if you enjoy any of these templates they're available on my Etsy shop. The Etsy shop is located at, on my banner. Um, there's a direct link. Um, the Etsy shop allows you to download any of the templates at home and then um, create wonderful projects at home or um, if you're a classroom teacher to use it in your classroom. So I use this in the beginning of the school year. Um, it definitely the takeaway for students the skills that they learned were basically about teamwork um, they got to observe other students work and then they were being creative at the same time. So it is broken up into three, three different parts once you see the template. Um, you can have the students fill in what you want in the puzzle piece. Um, this can apply to any classroom. So if you're a science teacher, then you may ask, you may ask them to kind of uh, fill in things that are more related to science. Um, if you're a math teacher, then you may have them fill in things about math um, they, that might be an interest for them. Um, since I'm an art teacher, I basically had them pick their favorite color, maybe draw a sport that they play like soccer or basketball, um, some type of sports. And then, um, and then you can either pick a last part, it could be their choice if you want as well. So there's a lot of flexibilities to this lesson. Um, they color it in, it can be markers or crayons depending on what age group you're working with. And then they do have to cut out um, this entire puzzle piece and they just have to stay on this line. Um, another little thing I do with my kindergartners if they're struggling with cutting which they do because they are learning how to cut with scissors is I highlight just around where they're supposed to cut um, I just take a yellow highlighter and go around and they follow that where I've highlighted to cut so then they don't end up chopping their whole piece in half um, just a little bit of a tip I'm throwing out there um, that I've used in my classroom So this is also a lesson on kind of being unique. Um, I kind of run 
my curriculum on that. Um, all students are different. Um, they create in different ways. Um, some students like to draw a little more abstract. Um, they just like to have fun with color and kind of splash it around. I've watched other students that love to just take a mechanical pencil and get super detailed with their drawing. Um, I love to watch those differences as an art educator in my classroom because um, none of the classrooms, none of the classes are the same. Um, I do teach about 900 students, so the video that I've compiled is various students kind of putting their puzzle piece together um, onto a big heart. So I draw the heart on a big poster and then they cut out the puzzle piece and then they have to literally try to stay inside the heart. It's not perfect in the end. I like to call them classroom hearts. Um, and then it's a nice way of decorating your classroom after um, because that basically represents your students at the same time, um, the classroom hearts. So I do call this, cla uh, this project classroom hearts. So I do hope you enjoy um, the video. Um, like I said, some of the materials that you're going to use, uh, moving on to the next slide, some of the materials are crayons, markers, and pencils. I keep it pretty basic because this is a project for kind of the beginning of the year, um, getting the students to communicate with each other. Um, it does teach them how to wait and patience because if somebody is putting their puzzle on the heart, um, the three students behind them, they have to learn to wait, wait their turn. Um, they're also kind of looking at that other student's puzzle piece. Um, and it's just an extremely wonderful way of bringing your class together. Um, so I hope you enjoy the, um, the video that's on the next slide. that maybe um, is looking to kind of um, looking for creative ideas for their uh, classroom um, definitely share any of my links to them um, reach out and uh, write comments below the videos and um, hit the like button and then definitely hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for um, any notifications uh, from Valangi Art. Thank you so much for joining me um, this in this early morning on a Monday. Um, and thank you again, guys, uh, for joining me for another video. All right. Thanks. Bye.